The Left 4 Dead games are some of the most beloved shooters of all time. Tens of thousands of people still play them to this day. So when a spiritual successor was announced in the form of Back 4 Blood, it seemed like an easy slam dunk. Yet a few years later, Back 4 Blood is completely dead and most people have forgotten that it even existed in the first place. So what went wrong? And how did a studio that had the reputation for developing two of the most influential zombie games of all time manage to mess something up so badly? Well, to find out, we gotta start at the very beginning. Pretty much everyone knows the story of Left 4 Dead. The zombie shooter was released by Valve in 2008 to immense praise from fans and critics alike. The game's success prompted the release of a sequel so good that people, like me, are still talking about it today. But I bet you didn't know that it wasn't solely developed by Valve. Left 4 Dead is openly known as Valve's franchise, but they didn't make it alone. In fact, it actually started out as a passion project of a company called Turtle Rock Studios. They were a tiny studio of six that Valve had contracted way back in 2003 to help with Counter-Strike. The companies formed a close bond when working together, so when Turtle Rock went looking for a publisher to help them support their newest prototype called Left 4 Dead, Valve was happy to jump aboard the project. In the end, the bulk of the work was done by Turtle Rock, while Valve handled the marketing, funding, and much of the writing. But Valve knew early in development that Left 4 Dead was going to be a success. Beyond that, it was clear that there was some real talent and potential behind Turtle Rock. This prompted Valve to offer to buy the studio outright. For such a young team, this was the deal of a lifetime. One of the largest and most prestigious game companies in the world was offering to buy them out and fund and publish future projects. Very few game developers get that type of opportunity, so it was no surprise that Turtle Rock agreed. A year before Left 4 Dead's release, Turtle Rock Studios was purchased and renamed to Valve South. Left 4 Dead became a smash hit and marked the first major joint success between Valve and their new studio. And the future seemed bright, but just a few years later, things would change drastically, and this would lead to a series of events that would cause Back 4 Blood to eventually fail. Left 4 Dead was a near-perfect game, so not long after its release, work began on Left 4 Dead 2. But this time, things were a bit different. Valve decided to take the lead on the project, and Turtle Rock had to give up some control. The game came out and was even better than the first one, but things weren't smooth sailing. Turtle Rock and Valve began butting heads and having creative differences. They weren't aligned on vision, and the relationship became strained due to constant disagreements. Their company culture was changing, they had less independence than before, and they didn't really know how to conform to Valve's way of doing things. In an interview, one of Turtle Rock's founders said the following, The culture changed a lot when we became Valve, and not all of it was what we felt was the right way to go, and it wasn't the way that we wanted to work. So, in 2010, Turtle Rock and Valve parted ways. Valve would retain ownership for their Left 4 Dead IP, and Turtle Rock would have the freedom to work on new projects as long as they weren't Left 4 Dead related. They had their freedom, but their franchise was now in Valve's hands. With the Left 4 Dead series being one of the most popular game franchises of the early 2000s, there was still room for it to expand. Pretty much everyone expected Valve to announce at least one more sequel. Yet to fans' surprise, no news came. With the original developers behind the franchise gone and two solid games released, Valve seemed shockingly disinterested in the series. They released a few DLC, but from 2012 onwards, they seemed to move away from Left 4 Dead. From their perspective, there wasn't much reason to make a sequel. Left 4 Dead 2 still had a vibrant player base that was creating its own content via the Steam workshop. Speaking of a vibrant player base, I want to take a minute to thank the sponsor of today's video, War Thunder. War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made, and in this game you can take command of over 2,500 tanks, helicopters, and ships of 10 major nations, ranging from the biplanes and armored cars of the 1920s to the fighter jets and main battle tanks found in present day. I'm telling you, this game is extremely cool, and the in-depth customization system really helps you to tailor your vehicles to how you want them to be, with a ton of camouflages, historical markings, and decorations for all types of vehicles. Plus, the game is super immersive with realistic graphics, incredible and authentic sounds, and of course, the insane attention to historically accurate detail with the vehicles. There are over 70 million players in the War Thunder community, so join them in epic PvP battles today and delve into War Thunder for free on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox by using my link in the description. If you sign up today, you could get a massive bonus pack with multiple premium vehicles and an exclusive vehicle decorator if you are a new or returning player that hasn't played in 6 months. 
Furthermore, Valve's principles as a game publisher made it rare for them to produce sequels. They tried to avoid milking series or making underwhelming games that don't add anything to the franchise. That leads to them having high quality releases, but it also means content for their existing franchises is slow to develop. In fact, Valve's slow pace with making content for Left 4 Dead was a major reason for their falling out with Turtle Rock Studios. Despite all that, fans still clung to the hope that Left 4 Dead 3 might someday be announced. Every once in a while, rumors would float that Left 4 Dead 3 was on the brink of a release, but Valve was quick to shut these down. In fact, in early 2020, they put out a statement clarifying that they are absolutely not developing another Left 4 Dead. That same year, Valve would release the first major update that Left 4 Dead 2 had gotten in years, giving the game a brand new campaign. The update was bittersweet. On one hand, it was exciting that after all these years, fans were finally getting new content of this scale. On the other hand, it seemed to be a signal that the company saw a sequel as unnecessary. Necessary. New content was likely limited to occasional updates and mods. There was no hope for Left 4 Dead 3. Well, until Turtle Rock Studios returned. In the years since they left Valve, Turtle Rock had struggled. They'd only released one game, Evolve, which was widely considered a disappointment. The company was directionless and broke. The desperation of their current situation led them to chase nostalgia for their earlier days with Left 4 Dead. So they started designing a new zombie shooter that would scratch the Left 4 Dead 3 itch that fans had for nearly 10 years, and this new game would be a way for Turtle Rock to reinvent the zombie shooter genre and be back on top as the king of zombie games. Enter Back for Blood. Back for Blood was announced during the Game Awards in 2020, and they made it pretty obvious that this was a non-Valve Left 4 Dead 3 alternative. I mean, everything from the structure of the title, with the number 4 in it, to easter eggs in the reveal trailer, to even the presentation of the gameplay itself was unapologetically Left 4 Dead. I mean, look at these doors and and the safe room. It looks identical to what you see in Left 4 Dead 2. It shared the main premise, four survivors gunning their way through a zombie apocalypse, and of course, the main developers, Turtle Rock Studios. The marketing made it very clear that Back for Blood was supposed to be a bigger and better version of Left 4 Dead. It's obvious why Turtle Rock Studios leaned into this idea. It allowed them to tap into an already existing fan base to generate hype for their new IP. But little did they realize that there was a real danger to this strategy. The only thing that fans and journalists seemed to know about Back for Blood was that it was supposed to be like Left 4 Dead. And as you could probably assume, that is a recipe for high expectations and disappointment. It also meant that the game didn't really have a clear identity outside of the shadow of its older brother. Just look at the articles written on the game at the time. People didn't care about Back for Blood they cared about getting another Left 4 Dead. The bar was set really high, and if the game didn't live up to the hype, it would be dead in the water. Or you could say Left 4 Dead, get it? Could Turtle Rock deliver? Well, from the start, things weren't looking too great. In fact, cracks began to show as early as the beta. People didn't hate the game, but it was becoming clear that it was no Left 4 Dead. It had a completely different feel and tone. The fast-paced gunslinging had been abandoned for the slower, more down-to-earth pace of modern shooters. There was now a linear progression, the goofy tone of Left 4 Dead was toned down and felt somehow more corporatized, Versus mode was removed, and the single-player campaign was far weaker than it should have been in order to push players towards multiplayer. All of these new mechanics weren't necessarily bad, but they meant that the game just didn't feel like Left 4 Dead, and that was a problem. To make matters worse, the game's beta was incredibly glitchy. People were already skeptical of Back 4 Blood, and the glitches just added more fuel to the fire. The release of the full game was approaching rapidly, yet fans' hype was falling, and the criticism was getting much worse. At this point, Turtle Rock Studios had to pray that things came together with the full release. When Back for Blood was finally released, the reviews were unanimous. It's okay, but not as good as Left 4 Dead. Being just an alright game isn't enough to get players invested unless for some reason you're Call of Duty, and the numbers showed that. Back for Blood peaked at 60,000 concurrent players and then quickly dropped off as people lost interest. It only took a few months for Left 4 Dead 2 to begin consistently beating it in player count. People would rather play a 14-year-old game than Turtle Rock's new flashy title. But why did the game fizzle out so quickly? Couldn't it have found an audience with casuals or younger fans not as driven by nostalgia? Well, no. The problem is that Back for Blood was trying to do two things at 
wants. It wanted to be a fresh, interesting take on the shooter genre for more experienced players, but it also wanted to cosplay as a Left 4 Dead sequel. Both of these approaches have potential, but trying to juggle them at the same time just doesn't work. The game had no unique identity, and not to mention that it had some severe design flaws. And to understand them, we need to start with Back 4 Blood's core mechanic, the card system. Combat in the game is centered around the use and collection of cards. Cards can give players all sorts of advantages, like increased healing speed, increased damage, or an extra life. You start with a set number of starter cards to make a basic deck. However, as you complete missions and gain supply points, you can buy more powerful and interesting cards. Strategy in Back for Blood revolved around collecting cards and combining them to make cohesive and powerful decks. This system is easily the best and worst part of Back for Blood. On one hand, the game had almost infinite depth. A player who mastered this system could be on a totally different level than a beginner. It also allowed players to customize their experience. However, it was also fairly complex and didn't seem to fit the rest of the game. This card system would make sense and an RPG or a roguelike, but not a simple run-and-gun shooter. The focus on customization, linear progression, and creating optimal builds made Back for Blood a totally different experience than Left 4 Dead. That's not only a problem because it makes the games different, it's an issue because the rest of Back for Blood isn't built to accommodate this card system. RPGs have very intentional campaigns and tutorials built to teach you their mechanics. Similarly, roguelikes early level design are dedicated to teaching the player how to use their abilities. Back for Blood doesn't do anything like this. Players could play the game for a week straight and still not understand the card system. Plus, even when players do master it, the game just becomes extremely easy. Enemies that would be fun in a shooter feel overly simplistic and uninspired in an RPG. At the start of every mission, the enemies get to draw their own cards and get stat boosts, and this does add some flavor to the combat, but it's pretty much the only way that they interact with the card system. So in short, this entire card system was a weird combination of things that didn't quite fit together, and it kind of felt like an un necessary gimmick just to make the game seem a little more interesting. So I mentioned how the game would get easy if you had the right builds, but I need to dive into the difficulty of this game in general. In Back for Blood, Turtle Rock attempted to continue the use of the director as found in Left 4 Dead. Basically, the director would observe your gameplay in Left 4 Dead, and then when things got too easy, it would up the ante and send harder enemies, and when things got insanely hard, an easier path would open up the map. This is an overly simplistic explanation, but let's just say that it was absolutely revolutionary when it was released for Left 4 Dead, so it comes as no surprise that they decided to continue using the system in this new title. In theory, the director should fix those imbalances that were found in the card system by ensuring that players always felt the perfect amount of challenges. But in reality, it was constantly overcorrecting by spiking difficulty one moment and then making the game stupidly easy the next. Because of this, Back for Blood just didn't feel good to play. You would never get into a rhythm, and it felt like you had a lot of unfair and cheap losses. It's one thing for a game to be hard, but it's another thing when a game just feels like it decides to kill you because you're playing too well. The poorly explained card system, plus the difficulty spikes, meant that Back for Blood was actually an extremely annoying game to play. These issues, plus the glitches, lack of charm, strange design choices, and reliance on comparisons to Left 4 Dead cemented Back for Blood's place and doomed it from the start. Left 4 Dead fans went in expecting a simple shooter, and they were blindsided by a complicated roguelike that played completely different from Left 4 Dead. Meanwhile, newer fans were overwhelmed and annoyed by how inconsistent the difficulty was in Back for Blood, and they quit pretty quickly. In short, the game was dead in the water before it even began. Turtle Rock resented having to answer to higher-ups in Valve in its early days, but in retrospect, it's clear that Valve's oversight was the key to restraining the studio's worst instincts. Back for Blood is a bloated game that doesn't know what it wants to be and does nothing particularly well. Its combat felt sluggish and brutal, the card system was undercooked, and its enemies and level design felt uninspired. Back for Blood was supposed to be a return to form for the studio. However, it was anything but, and the player count reflects that. Within a year, more than half of the player base had dropped the game, and Left 4 Dead 2 had 6,000 more active players than Back for Blood. Turtle Rock pretty much saw the writing on the wall from the start, and quietly announced that there would be no more content for the game on February 2nd, 2023, just a year and a half after its launch. The game's servers are still running for now, but it never 
never reached its fullest potential and failed on nearly every single level. And it's honestly a tragedy, because we were expecting amazing things from Turtle Rock and, well, they didn't deliver at all. And that, my friends, is how Back for Blood failed. Did you ever play Back for Blood? Were the reviews justified, or did you maybe find some enjoyment in this mess of a game? What could the developers have done to make it better? Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and make sure to like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed. Also, thank you one more time to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to play it for free on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox now by using my link in the pinned comment or video description. Plus, if you sign up today, you can get access to that free bonus pack. I will see you guys next time, and peace.